JT Show. What's going on guys and welcome to another episode of the Smash JT Show and I'm going to be doing it sitting down at the Smash desk today because I need to go over an article from CNET. A lot of people are starting to talk about this and it's bringing up a lot of controversy. Mostly focused on YouTubers, negativity and outrage culture on the internet. How it gets attention, views and subsequently brings in money to those channels. And ultimately, the goal of this video is just to talk about the state of YouTube, the state of YouTubers, and the state of print and online media on the whole, because there's a lot to be worried about here. Certainly an interesting approach by the writer, the editor-at-large for Cena, Ian Share, saying, meet the angry gaming YouTubers who turn outrage into views. This is something I've been wanting to cover for a while now, and thankfully this guy made an article so that it is topical. Lots of major channels have been talking about this recently. The biggest one coming to mind is The Quartering, but also Jim Sterling on Twitter has been going off about it as well. And he says here, kicking it off, how to make a successful video on one of the internet's most popular sites. Step one, find something to be angry about. Go to online forums, track what's hot on Twitter, and figure out the outrage of the day. Step two, rant into a camera for 10 minutes. Step three, profit. Well, I can assure this dude, Ian Share, that it's not that simple and straightforward or easy, and this is simply taking a handful of, in this case, it seems to be focused on gaming YouTubers, and outrage culture and saying because these few people do it that's how everyone makes money on youtube that's what's successful that's what drives views and it's a very simplistic view of the battlefield and i call it the battlefield because youtube is just that it's an environment where everybody is fighting for views they want your eyes watching their videos and whatever they can do to do that whether it takes clickbait whether it takes doing something crazy on the video whatever it takes they will do that to get the attention of the masses so it's not necessarily focusing on something for outrage but in this case that seems to be what ian thinks is the only way to get attention on youtube welcome to 2019 where some influential gamers on youtube have learned what many others including the president of the united states have figured out anger sells it sells big it does but so doesn't quality videos so doesn't in-depth reviews so doesn't really deep dives on things people didn't know about that wanted to know more and bringing it to them in a light that they didn't see before this is almost in a way calling out negativity as a bad thing like something people shouldn't be allowed to do you shouldn't you shouldn't make a video if it's negative i mean could you even imagine the landscape of youtube what it would look like if people weren't allowed to make videos being angry like uh, is that the direction we want to head with all of this it's already been censored like insanely crazy but now we're going to the next step of over censorship to telling people how they're allowed to act and react to things what is even happening where this goes through someone's mind as normal like that that is completely insane and nonsensical. But like I said, YouTube is a battleground, but it's not strictly limited to YouTube. In fact, mainstream media is dying. It's been dying for a very long time with a slow and painful death. It still exists, and yes, there is still some online sites worth going to, but many of these sites have not adapted and changed with the times, and because of that, they have fallen behind and had to resort to tactics of starting to attack YouTubers. I can see it clear as day. I may not always agree with the quartering or Jim Sterling or Angry Joe or even back in the day Alpha Omega Sin or anybody who takes an approach of being angry at something. I might not agree with them, but I do respect where they're coming from and I respect their right to voice their opinions however they want to. There are some lines that are crossed sometimes that go a little bit too far, especially when you start concerning yourself with inciting a fan base to get angry or attack a singled out person. 
then there's an issue with it but there's a very gray area there too because you also want to let them have their freedom of speech to be able to talk and react to things how they want to so it's a very convoluted not so much black and white issue that ian is trying to make it look like here and the way he just tosses in Donald Trump is absolutely hysterical. Starting last year, a new cater of negative YouTube gaming commentators came to prominence. Almost in unison, they in each enjoyed spikes in audience and view counts, attracting hundreds of thousands of subscribers. That translated into millions of views a week as they dissected the video game industry's missteps. Well, damn, it sounds like they did a pretty good job of analyzing the video game industry and what's wrong with it if they're attracting that many people, getting that many people to click the subscribe button for what they're talking about. Sounds like they might be on point or at least doing something entertaining enough to make people want to come back for more, which might be construed as negative cells. And yes, sometimes it does and sometimes positivity sells. Sometimes it's a whole lot of different things that sell. So you can't just say negative YouTubers are what sell and nothing else works. I have had some videos personally that have done very well, but they haven't been necessarily focused on negative. If you don't do negative right, you get destroyed. People are not morons. You need to treat them with respect, treat them with having intelligence, and approach a topic carefully because if you do it wrong, it's gonna be a bad time for your channel you need to make sure if you're going to be negative about something as a youtuber you know damn well what you're talking about and why you're negative about it so yeah if you're negative about something most likely you have a good reason to be and if you're getting subscribers and views most likely the audience is agreeing with you I don't see how this is a bad thing do I feel like YouTube could use some more positivity Sure, but it's there. Like, you can always find positivity on YouTube. Any topic available, there is a yin and yang to conversations where some commentators will take one side and others will take the other. And the truth usually lies somewhere in between. You want to watch happy videos about video games and the modern and retro scene? Go watch Johnny Millennium over on Happy Console Gamer. One of the best YouTube channels I know of, one of my favorite YouTubers out there, always seems to find the light in something that might be dark and talking about the positives in the game industry. It's there. He has a lot of subscribers. He gets a lot of views and he just talks about video games and does a great job about it. You want to get negativity? You want to find out what the deep, dark, dirty secrets of the video game industry are? Go watch The Quartering, Jim Sterling, or even Clean Prince Gaming, who he brings up here as somebody who's super negative and has over six 631,000 subscribers. Now, I'm not saying that Ian is wrong here with these gaming commentators getting lots of views and subscribers being angry. But maybe that's what the audience wants. Like, I don't understand why this is a bad thing. This just seems like a jealously written article because CNET is not getting the views and clicks that some of these single people that never had any professional training in the journalism industry are basically coming in and eating their lunch because they're doing it better. And ironically, you can't really do a video talking about angry gaming YouTubers without sounding like a bitter, angry writer yourself. So it is very ironic that someone wrote an article saying angry gaming YouTubers sell and they get the clicks and now here I am on CNET clicking on this article and talking about it. So it's weird how negativity does sell. If this was a positive article talking about YouTube in a positive light, I probably wouldn't be making a video on it because what is there to be seen there? There's plenty of positivity there. Nobody cares about it because they know it's there. They want to talk about the negativity and how it's ruining things because there's a story there. On his Twitter feed, he has this long string of comments and this is where I took sincere issue with him. Unfortunately, I think he did have a good premise with his article, but then he started to at the channels that he was talking about and let them know that this is how he felt about them, which is cool. I mean, hey, here I'm being completely open about this. These are the people I'm talking about. This is what I feel about it. Okay, cool. But then you start adding the companies like Volvo and the advertisers and talking about right here, talking about how they don't know that they're sponsoring 
these channels. They don't know that they're putting money into them. And this is going to start affecting the livelihood of these hardworking YouTubers because some journalist that's pissed off that he's not getting the attention on his website starts going out and proactively attacking successful YouTubers, looking for any cracks, looking for anything wrong with them to tear them down. And that right there is what I take a major issue with. You can't win a fight fairly. You start going at the money, you start going at the advertisers and trying to cause another adpocalypse. I mean, this is just days after the Vox apocalypse. Here we go again with this dude going after advertisers saying, you guys are sponsoring negative YouTubers. Are you sure you want your brands attached to that? When you break it down like that, of course not. It sounds terrible. If I was a company and I was paying for advertisements, I would not want my brand associated with ranters and negativity and angry people because that could be looked at as I'm supporting people who might be inciting anger, violence, things like that. So the way society runs these days, you want to steer as clear from that as possible. But the problem is oftentimes people lump together violence with people who are being critical. And those are two completely separate ideals. Unfortunately, sometimes they meld together and that's where people like Ian get away with saying, hey advertisers, do you know that you're supporting these guys? That is a sincere issue and I lost a ton of respect for CNET and Ian Share when he started doing that. This is exactly the problem with people who are jealous of successful YouTubers right here. The one of the ones who would go on the record, Honda, DeVry, and Gamefly, all said they were reevaluating their blacklists after my request for comment. In some cases, they're investigating with YouTube why their ads showed up on ones they didn't want to be associated with. Basically being like, hey, whistleblower, I found out these a-holes and you guys are sponsoring them and they are inciting all these awful things. Are you sure you want your brand attached to them? When in reality, these guys are simply criticizing companies, talking about what's wrong, why they need to fix them, and being who they are. And this dude being jealous over at CNET because he's not getting his clicks, starts going after the wallets of these successful YouTubers. Thankfully in the comments, most people are railing on this guy, telling him that it's awful that he's coming after them. Is this guy serious? The negativity is an answer to our EA, Microsoft, and journal problems. Exactly. Someone is not happy for getting exposed for exploiting customers, loot boxes, gambling, wrong ads, and exploiting their workforce, crunch, fired while making a profit. So they basically want to be more like, yeah, exactly. This is the problem is this guy, Ian, is an apologist for the video game companies, how they're treating employees, how they're treating customers, how they're getting away with not even completing a game and he's coming after the people who are criticizing that and saying that that's not okay. He's going to these advertisers saying, are you sure you want to be supporting these content creators who are inciting all this anger? Come on now. Come on, Ian. This is, this is a bad look for you. It's a bad look for CNET. It's embarrassing for the entire industry of journalism outside of YouTube. And honestly, it kind of hurts my brain trying to wrap my head around where this guy was trying to even go with this in the first place. Initially, I thought it was just a playful article of, hey, this is how these people are successful. That's what's wrong with YouTube. Ha ha ha. Then he started contacting the advertisers. That's when this all started going downhill. So Ian, nice try. Unfortunately, you exposed yourself by doing that. The actual article goes on for a very, very long time. And he talks about the ins and outs of all of these major content creators like The Quartering, Clean Prince Gaming, Jim Sterling, talking about what's wrong with YouTube and why these companies should not be sponsoring these guys because they're angry and and they they shouldn't be successful because they're they're not positive like what kind of world do you want to live in just one filled with rainbows and not talking about the actual reality you just want to pretend that everything's always fine i'm i'm honestly perplexed at where he was even going with this yes negativity sells yes it's kind of a problem because negativity sells but at the end of the day 
Negativity is required. It's necessary. It's a necessary evil to fight back these evil companies that try to get away with doing all these awful things to consumers. These business practices that should be illegal, but they grease the pockets of politicians to get away with things. That needs to be brought to the attention of the public, and YouTube is the perfect platform to do that. So anyone writing an article saying these people should be silenced, they don't have integrity, they have so much negativity that nobody should pay attention to them can be summed up in one word jealousy i mean honestly that's all it is ian is simply jealous that youtubers are more successful than what once was a major successful internet website anyways that's how i feel about ian shares meet the angry gaming youtubers article on cnet I think it's an absolute joke. This dude should have really evaluated his entire situation before going after the advertisers. Everything else, he's more than welcome to criticize. I'm not talking about that. Everyone has their right to say what they want about somebody else as long as they're not hurting anybody. I'm perfectly fine with it. But when you start going after the advertisers, that's when you start hurting people. A lot of these major content creators make a living off of advertisers on YouTube. And when you start going after them because they're too negative, it just really leaves a bad taste in everyone's mouth. And honestly, this guy has no idea how YouTube even works. Keep your politics out of video games, he says at the end of a video. A thumbnail image shows a woman with busted rubber stamp across her face. Yes, CNET, because that's how you get clicks on your videos, which is the entire point to making an audience watch your videos, keeping them entertained is part of it. That is the business, the industry that YouTube is. Like it or not, some people do it better than others, and unfortunately, online media kind of is falling by the wayside and dying because YouTubers have been so successful in getting their point across to their audience, something a lot of print media has lost a long time ago. Anyways, that's where I'm going to leave this topic. I could talk for hours on end about Meet the Angry Gaming YouTubers and why this article on the surface was actually a good place to start and an interesting conversation. But man, it really went south when he started adding all of the companies that sponsor YouTubers. That is where you draw the line and say, dude, it went a little bit too far here. Moving on to this week's smashing video of the week, we got Chronic Spartan Gaming and his Gamer vs. Gamer series. He previously did RGT vs. Spawnwave and most recently did Beat 'em Ups vs. Metal Jesus Rocks. And maybe, if I'm lucky enough, he'll do me against somebody someday. But he is an up-and-coming YouTuber right now. He's got 264 subscribers, and he puts a ton of work and effort into each one of his videos. So I want you guys to see a little bit about what he brings to the table here. Two very good YouTubers, Beat em Ups and Metal Jesus Rocks. He goes into their history, the how they got corner, started, and why they've grown so much, what they've done. It's a fantastic watch. Style. Strongly recommend checking this one out. He goes to the original video where Mel Jesus Rocks got started, his first one he ever published. Then he talks about beat em ups and how beat em ups got started. However, his sense of humor it's was so funny looking at wood like this. Outset. Original OG wood. With that laid back team confidence, given those early videos a charm of their own. Over the years, the style of Woods has evolved as he has grown. So that is Chronic Spartan Gaming and his Beat 'em Ups vs. Metal Jesus Rocks Gamer vs. Gamer. Strongly recommend you guys checking this one out. I will put a link in the description below. And that's where I'm going to leave this week's episode. But before I go, I want to put all my Patreons listed on the screen right there to say a special thank you to each and every one of you guys. Also put a link on the Smash JT website to all these people. And if they have a channel, I also link their channels there. You guys are absolutely amazing and it really means the world to me. If anyone else out there is interested in joining them, I'll put the link on the screen right there. And if you haven't subscribed already, I'll put the link for subscribing to my channel there as well. That's all I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, you stay smashing.